Once again, I'm William Boyer, the public information officer for the beautiful city of Pasadena, California. And we're here to do our annual public safety and security press conference on the Rose Parade and the Rose Bowl game. At this point in time, I'd like to turn it over to our city manager, Steve Mermel, who will begin the press conference. Steve? Good morning, thank you, William. Good morning and welcome to Pasadena. We hold these annual press conferences to help ensure that everyone has a safe and enjoyable experience at the Rose Parade and the Rose Bowl game. The city especially wants to welcome our visitors from Oklahoma and Georgia. We know you'll have a great time in Pasadena. I also want to thank members of the press from those states who are helping to relay the important information we're providing today uh, through this press conference. Uh, in a moment, you'll hear from Chief Sanchez and Fire Chief Washington. But first, I want to bring to the podium Mr. David Eads, who's the Executive Director and Chief Executive Officer of the Tournament of Roses. The city greatly values its partnership with the Tournament of Roses Association. And this past year, and into the run-up to this year's events, I've been working very closely with Mr. Eads. He's done a great job so far, and I have every confidence that this year's events will be as spectacular as years past. Thank you. David? Thank you, Steve. Again, my name's David Eads with the Tournament of Roses here in Pasadena. Uh, this year, the Tournament of Roses is proud to present the 129th Rose uh, Parade and the 104th Rose Bowl game. And these historic events have really become known as America's New Year celebration. The Rose Parade is watched by more than 45 million viewers in the US and is distributed to over 120 countries around the world. And it really has grown to showcase the hope and joy of the new year to a global audience. And while our event is global, our number one priority is the safety and security of all of our guests, our participants, our volunteers, and our staff. And you'll hear more about our plans in just a few minutes. Uh, both the Rose Parade and the Rose Bowl game are only possible because of the extraordinary partnership and collaboration between the tournament, the city of Pasadena, the Rose Bowl Stadium, and the community. We are extremely excited this year that the 2018 college football semifinal uh, game at the Rose Bowl, presented by Northwestern Mutual, features the University of Oklahoma and the University of Georgia, and this will be their first matchup ever. We know both teams and their fans will have an incredible experience here in Pasadena, and I want to wish both teams go dogs and boomer sooner. But on a more serious note, I want to express my gratitude for all the important work that is both seen and unseen uh, by all of our public safety officials and law enforcement personnel. This includes at the federal, state, and local levels. And I want to acknowledge the leadership of Chief Sanchez and Chief Washington and their respective staffs. Um, new this year is the tournament's Rose Event app uh, that will provide information on the Rose Parade. Uh, it can be downloaded at the app store. Uh, it will also include the ability for instant alerts and notifications. And also for additional information, individuals can check out the tournament's website at www.tournamentofroses.com. And now it's my pleasure to introduce to the podium Chief Washington. Good morning, my name is Bertrand Washington. I have the pleasure to serve as the fire chief for the city of Pasadena. On behalf of the women and men of the Faulkner Fire Department, we'd like to say hello, greetings, and, uh, and welcome. Safety is the top priority for us during, during this time. As many people come to, to enjoy uh, the activities that are being planned here, as well as the thousands of people that are coming out to camp overnight. The overnight lows are expected to be in the mid-40s. We need you to be ready with layers of clothing. We uh, also would ask you to bring gloves, hats, and blankets just to make sure that you're going to keep warm throughout the night. We ask that you please bring plenty of water. We want to make sure that you stay high hydrated and that you also have food so you can be nourished through the night. We'd also ask you to be aware that alcoholic beverages are not allowed uh, on the parade route. 
They're also known to increase risk associated with dehydration. Alcoholic beverages can also uh, in, increase your chances for hypothermia. Food cart vendors are required to be licensed. So please make sure if you're buying food that they have a, uh, per, a permit from the Pasadena Health Department. Pasadena firefighters are going to be along the parade route throughout the night. As you will hear more later from Chief Sanchez, uh, the route will, will close earlier this year. We'll be looking for hazardous situations as well as things like bonfires, which are not allowed. Bonfires can be especially dangerous because they can easily catch other things on, on fire. However, small pro, pro, professionally manufactured barbecues are allowed. However, they must be at least one foot off the ground and at least 25 feet away from any buildings. You're also re required to have a fire extinguisher on hand if you're going to have a professional small barbecue. Daytime highs on New Year's days are expected to be in the 70s. We're expecting it to, to be sunny, so we're asking you to please bring ample sun, sunscreen and also, again, a hat to make sure that you pr pr protect yourself uh, from the sun. It would also be helpful to have shades as you're going to be out in the sun for quite a while. Pat pets are not recommended along the parade route. They can be easily frightened or scared from the productions that can occur from, uh, from the floats, such as pyro uh, pyrotechnics and other uh, uh, loud sounds. Tents, sofas, ladders, things like that are not allowed along the parade route. It's very easy for individuals to have accidents when they try to operate those items, and it also can get in the way of others' uh, ability to see the parade. Firewa fireworks are also not allowed. Please report any suspicious activities or things that you might see uh, along the parade route. We ask that if you see something, please say something. There'll be uniformed officers along the parade route that you can uh, speak with. You can also dial 626-744-4241. If you see something and need to say something, of course, if it's something that's urgent or you can call 911. Please make sure that you follow the instructions given by the authorities. They're there to help make sure that we all have a very enjoyable event. In case of a medical e e emergency, please call 911. And when you're camping out or when you position yourself along the parade route, please make a mental note of exactly where you are as soon as you get there. If you have the need to call 911, we're going to need that information. We're assisted by several partner or, uh, organizations throughout the region, uh, Los Angeles area fire departments, as well as the American Red Cross and our own EMS reserve. The Pasadena Fire Department will be out in force to make a difference for you and your safety. Our goal is to make sure that you have an enjoyable event and we will be there to do our part. Now, I'm pleased to introduce the Pasadena Police Chief, Phil Sanchez. Well, good morning, everybody. On behalf of the Pasadena Police Department, happy holidays and welcome to the city of Pasadena. As you've heard, the common themes that seem to be emerging from this press conference is that public safety is our number one priority. In that regard, uh, the Pasadena Police Department is working with its state, local, and federal partners to ensure that we have accurate and timely and contemporary threat, ass threat assessments with respect to the parade route and the game. Threat assessments and, and fan safety is our top priority. It's important to know that the Pasadena Police Department expects that there will be no drones at the, at the football game or at the parade route. So if your viewers have drones, we would ask that you would leave those at home. With respect to the game itself, 
uh, we have a clear bag policy, so we'll be issuing clear bags uh, to those attending the games. Less is more with respect to the parade route or with the game itself. The fewer things that you have to worry about you will uh, allow uh, you to enjoy the game and enjoy the, the parade route as well. Uh, as you've heard mentioned earlier, uh, we are uh, always looking at how to assess and measure uh, our security, always interested in adding these concentric circles so that we can protect our parade goers and our fans as well. In that effort, starting at 10 o'clock on December 31st, we will close Colorado Boulevard from what is commonly known TV Corner at Orange Grove in Colorado all the way through east to Sierra Madre and Paloma. Uh, that effort will be undertaken by law enforcement officers from Los Angeles County and the Pasadena Police Department and other law enforcement officers as well. There are 52 minor streets that will be barricaded and staffed with personnel. There are 21 major crossover streets that will be staffed with law enforcement personnel and mobile vehicles to allow access and cross over the parade route. Uh, it's important that your viewers, if they're attending to uh, attend the parade route, that they arrive early and bring a lot of patience. There will be hundreds of thousands of people on Colorado Boulevard and we will make every effort to ensure that people have access uh, either with ADA access or uh, otherwise uh, to ensure that uh, they have enjoyable time at the parade. We continue to work with our federal partners, as I would mentioned earlier. There are no known terrorist threats uh, in our area of operation, and we we'll continue to assess that up to parade day and uh, through the Rose Bowl game as well. Uh, under the leadership of our event planning Lieutenant Art Shute, uh, we've done uh, everything possibly uh, that we can to ensure that uh, our parade goers and, and our folks attending the games uh, will, uh, will enjoy the, uh, the festivities of this uh, very special day. It's important that you um, identify and uh, your viewers identify your law enforcement officers and uniformed deputies uh, and you follow directions from those officers and for those deputies uh, so that we can ensure your safety. Uh, as in years past, uh, we are the focus of um, um, many law enforcement resources on January 1st. Nothing has changed in that regard. Uh, we're receiving a lot of uh, resources from the Department of Homeland Security and from other federal agencies as well. Uh, <clears throat> but the uniform uh, police presence is, is a, a premier and very important that you follow uh, the directions of the officers. We can't pull off a safe parade without the assistance of our community. The truth of the matter is, is that many times our community members who are along the parade route will see something that's suspicious far in advance of a law enforcement officer. I encourage your viewers that will be attending the parade or attending the game, if you see something, say something. Don't dismiss your sense to call a law enforcement officer and allow him or her to, uh, to mitigate or to investigate the situation for you. As in years past, we'll have bomb detection dogs up and down the parade route uh, and canine teams uh, that will uh, help keep our parade safe. We will have overt and covert security as well. So we'll have uh, undercover agents that will be up and down the parade route. As I close my remarks, I'd like to thank Los Angeles County Sheriff Department Sheriff Jim McDonald, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Department of Homeland Security, ATF, U.S. Customs, the California National Guard, California Highway Patrol, the Los Angeles Port Police, and the Glendale Police Department. Extraordinary partners in this effort to make our um, our parade very safe. Special thanks to Joe Macias from the Department of Homeland Security for all the resources that uh, he has sent our way. Uh, so wishing you and yours a very happy holiday and a safe parade. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, everybody. So if we have some questions, we can take a couple of quick questions, sure. Right, so the question was, with respect to the concentric circles of, of security, what have we changed this year specifically? The most notable is the road closures. So we uh, saw just this, this morning in Australia, uh, there's no nexus to uh, terrorism at this point. Uh, however, there was a vehicle incursion where at least 19 people were seriously injured uh, in, in Australia. So that's the first major step. Uh, there are other steps that we're taking that I won't divulge at this time, but rest assured that through overt and covert security uh, that we'll have those measures in place for uh, 
uh, for the best effort to ensure safe, uh, fran, uh, fan safety and those attending the Rose Parade. What's important for your viewers to know is, is that there are no known threats uh, in our uh, area of operation, but like I said earlier, we'll continue to make that assessment up to and through the parade. Let me go over that again. So the road closure will start at 10 o'clock on December 31st. Uh, and uh, we, ha we will have a full solid closure by 11 o'clock. That's in conjunction with historically where we've allowed uh, our parade goers to move to the blue line. You're very familiar with that. That's a blue marking that's on Colorado Boulevard. It allows our parade goers to actually move into the street. Uh, so we thought this year was uh, a good year to initiate this, uh, this new change. Uh, it is for security measures uh, exclusively. We would ask uh, you know, people who have typically cruised the parade route uh, to leave your hot rods at home this year uh, or figure out some, uh, some other place that you might want to cruise. But Colorado Boulevard will not be available from 10 o'clock on the 31st, December 31st, through the conclusion of the parade on January 1st. Yes, my understanding is, and of course, uh, you can focus your cameras on the uh, on the uh, map just to my right as well. So the question is, is what is the passing of police department and our community partners or our law enforcement partners? What have we done to mitigate? Uh, backpack incursions or explosives or uh, threats from an elevated platform. I won't go into the specifics, but the Pasadena Police Department is well prepared for those threats. Uh, again, uh, our event planning team, uh, this is what they do 24-7. Uh, Lieutenant Art Shute and his team uh, make consistent assessments. Our uh, counterterrorism unit is attached to the event planning team. Uh, we, as you well know, host many large events uh, at, the, uh, at the Rose Bowl and in the city uh, throughout the year, so we're well prepared. We have studied uh, what happened in Las Vegas with a very interested uh, uh, perspective about how we might use uh, tactics uh, or equipment or technology or a combination of all of those uh, to help make the parade route safer. Absolutely, and, and that's historical. The question was, uh, you can't go into tactics too much, which I appreciate, uh, but will there be undercover officers? Yes. Uh, from the federal uh, agencies that, uh, that I've mentioned earlier and from our own team at the Pasadena Police Department, uh, we'll have uh, undercover assets along the parade route, uh, obviously for intelligence gathering and in the unforeseen uh, uh, incident where they have to take direct action. Uh, the question was, could I uh, again name the agencies? Uh, they are, for your record, the Los Angeles County Sheriff's, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Department of Homeland Security, United States Secret Service, ATF, U.S. Customs, California National Guard, Glendale Police Department, the California Highway Patrol, and the Los Angeles Port Police. The question is, does the uh, security or heightened security take away from the New Year's celebration? The answer is absolutely not. For those of you that have been to the parade and the game before, it's a wonderful experience. You do see uh, the police officers, uh, but it doesn't inhibit anybody having a fabulous time. It's a wonderful opportunity for families uh, to enjoy the, the parade, which has gone on uh, for 100 years, to enjoy the game. Personally, I enjoy sitting in the stands with people that come to visit us from other states as they look at the beautiful San Gabriel Mountains. Unfortunately, this year there's no snow on them, uh, but it's a marvelous place to be in the late afternoon in Pasadena on January 1st. Okay, so that concludes the primary speakers. We're going to now transition to our Spanish speakers. So I want to thank everyone for being here. And if we could get our Spanish 
speakers up. While we're doing the transition, I did want to share with you just a couple of little housekeeping type of things, please. The, in the event that there is an emergency, the city's primary way of to communicate online will be through our website, cityofpasadena.net, on Twitter, at PasadenaGov, at PasadenaPD, at PasadenaFD, F as in fire, D as in department, PasadenaGov, PasadenaPD, PasadenaFD. Tournamentofroses.com is the primary website for the Tournament of Roses Association for all event-related information. You can find them on Facebook and Twitter at Rose Parade. The Rose Bowl Stadium is rosebowlstadium.com, and they're also on Twitter and Facebook at Rose Bowl Stadium. Thank you, and with that, we'll bring up our Spanish speakers. for event app, Tournament of Roses event app. Great. All right, so our first speaker will be Lieutenant Jesse Carrillo from the police department. Eh, mi nombre es el Teniente Jesse Carrillo con el Departamento de Policía de Pasadena y esta mañana les queremos uh, dar unas noticias sobre el desfile y del Juego de las Rosas de, el, de Pasadena. Eh, queremos dar el mensaje que la seguridad pública es la, la meta primordial para la ciudad de Pasadena, el torneo de las Rosas y para todos los socios de seguridad pública. Estamos continuamente evaluando el potencial de amenaza y el sistema de gestión de riesgos para mejorar las operaciones de seguridad pública. Tenemos un comando unificado con agencias locales, estatales y federales. Cada año se implementan medidas sólidas de seguridad para los asistentes al desfile y al juego para asegurar que la ciudad de Pasadena y el torneo de las Rosas brinde un ambiente lo más seguro posible. Continuamente estamos haciendo evaluaciones de amenazas y protocolos establecidos para mejorar las operaciones de seguridad pública y mitigar el riesgo. Es importante saber que no se permiten los drones en el desfile o el juego. No se permiten escaleras en general a lo largo de la ruta. Eh, no se permiten mochilas, carteras ni bolsos grandes en el juego del Estadio de las Rosas. Y este es el tercer año de la política de bolsas claras en el Estado de las Rosas. Y no se permite alcohol, contenedores abiertos a lo largo de la ruta del desfile en cualquier momento. Les exigimos al, al público que planeen llegar temprano al desfile y al juego para permitir tiempo para el reviso de seguridad. Pueden comenzar a acampar el 31 de diciembre y pueden mantener la banqueta a partir del mediodía ese día. Se puede mover uno a la línea azul a las 11 de la noche Los menores deben de ser supervisados por un adulto de 10 de la noche hasta las 5 de la mañana. Medidas de seguridad mejoradas. Personal adi adi adicional, incluida la aplicación de la ley uniforme y la seguridad privada. Barreras de agua en calles seg secundarias a lo largo de la ruta de del desfile. El cierre de las calles de la ruta del desfile comienza a las 10 de la noche con el cierre completo a las 11 de la noche y sigue hasta, el, hasta que concluya el desfile. 
presencia de perros de detección de explosivos en todo el desfile y el juego van a estar es presente. Va a haber muchos activos de la ley encubiertos o clandestinos también durante, antes del desfile y durante y al concluir con el juego y el desfile también. Queremos decirle al público que también el público juega un papel importante. Si ve algo, diga algo. Esté atento y reporte comportamiento sospechoso. Se puede marcar al 911 si es una emergencia o se puede llamar al, al Departamento de Policía al 626-744-4241. Si es necesario, se puede registrar la, la gente para recibir notificaciones de seguridad pública en tiempo real, alertas de seguridad y tráfico a través de mensajes de texto al Nixo, se puede obtener. Uh, se pueden, también se pueden uh, registrar para recibir este, llamadas telefónicas si es necesario al reverso del 911 por uh, please, por favor, p l -E -A -S. Y también se pueden uh, recibir información sobre las redes de Twitter y pueden ir a las, a las uh, páginas del internet sobre de la ciudad de Pasadena el Departamento de Policía de Pasadena y el Departamento de Bomberos de Pasadena, igual para recibir información. Les queremos agradecer a nuestros socios en seguridad pública que desempeñan un papel vital para que estos eventos sean un éxito cada año. Esos son el Departamento del Sheriff de Condado de Los Ángeles, el Buró Federal de Investigaciones, el Departamento de Seguridad Nacional, Servicio Secreto de los Estados Unidos, Oficina de Alcohol, Tabaco, Armas de Fuego y Explosivos, Aduanas de los Estados Unidos, la Guardia Nacional de California, la Patrulla de Caminos de California, la Policía del Puerto de Los Ángeles, el Departamento de Policía de Glendale y a la Comunidad de Agencia de Cumplimiento de la Ley a través del Sur de California por incluir al personal del Torneo de las Rosas y del Estadio de las Rosas. Gracias. Gracias. Uh, now we'll have Guillermo Basuta. Thank you. Ay, mucho gusto. Me llamo William Basuto, soy bombero aquí en la ciudad de Pasadena y nomás quería hablar pocas cosas de que nosotros andamos haciendo y queremos que el público también uh, lo haga también. La seguridad del público es lo más importante para nosotros. Nosotros queremos que todos estén uh, listos para el desfile de rosas, para que estén bien contentos como nosotros están contentos. Nosotros todo el año preparamos para este día y queremos decirle poco de lo que quieren hacer o tienen que hacer o, o, o cosas que, que deben hacer para que estén más a gusto. La noche debe estar poco frío, como unos 40 grados y entre el día como de 60 grados, pero con el aire va, se va a sentir uno más frío. Tiene que tener la ropa bien para que la noche esté bien a gusto y en el día se lo quita y esté más a gusto también. También que tengan bastante agua, bastante comida, cosas que necesitan para que no necesitan salir de, su, de donde se van a estar estaciados. Um, también tenemos que hablar del alcohol. El alcohol, cuando uno toma el alcohol, se pone más frío y no es bien para la persona. Entonces, no queremos que unos tomen tanto alcohol, ningún alcohol ahí en la, en la ruta de desfile. Um, también tenemos de bomberos, tenemos bastantes bomberos que están en la noche, toda la noche uh, de patrulla, no sé cómo decía esa palabra, de patrulla, toda la noche para arriba y para abajo si alguien necesita algo. Okay? Tenemos 24 horas, los bomberos, los paramédicos, todo ahí en el desfile, en la ruta de desfile, toda la noche si alguien necesita, necesita, alguien, necesita algo, nomás los llama y ahí estamos. Uh, queremos hablar de muchas personas se ponen frío y tienen incendios, tienen incendios que no deben de tener, tienen unos que se llaman bonfires que nomás ponen madera, en, uh, lavadores que, te, que traen y no deben de tener esos, deben de tener nomás los barbecues que, que, que compran de tienda y tienen que estar un pie del piso y 25 pies de cada edificio porque si no se puede encender un, un edificio. Uh, Andamos hablando de los animales, es bien que traigan animales, pero esos animales se pueden poner bastante frío y no van a estar bien a gusto. Entonces, si pueden, que dejen los animales en la casa. 
También queremos hablar poco de lo que pueden traer. Muchas personas piensan que si se van a dormir ahí en la noche pueden tener bastantes cosas. Pueden tener sillas, pueden tener sus sleeping bags, pero no pueden traer sofases, no pueden traer escaleras, ni tampoco pueden traer, uh, ¿cómo se llama?, uh, casas de cabañas. Los tents no se puede. Entonces traen sus almohadas, sus cobijas, sus sleeping bags y ahí van a estar bien a gustos. Y si necesitan algo, nomás, nomás necesita que apuntar 911 y vamos a estar ahí los bomberos. Gracias. Gracias. That concludes our press conference for today. I want to thank everyone for tuning in on the live stream as well as all the press that turned out today. We will be recording and rebroadcasting this on the city's website, cityofpasadena.net, uh, throughout the, uh, the days leading up to the Rose Parade and the Rose Bowl game. Thank you very much and have a great day.